Welcome to HXGN TV, my name is Brian. Underground detection is a growing market as surveyors, heavy construction operators, and other professionals realize more and more the significant need for safer operations. The business of detecting potential hazards underground is also evolving with this newfound focus. Today, we have Alexandre Novo from IDS GeoRadar and Jamie Bradburn from T2 Utility Engineers to discuss how the underground detection business is evolving. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Great, thank, thank you, you, Brian. Appreciate it. Alex, let's start with you. Give us an overview of what the underground detection business looks like, where it came from. Yeah, so since the 80s, mm -hmm. uh, GPR has been available in a, a sort of hand push cart uh, everybody call it lawnmower uh, mm -hmm. cart uh, with a single frequency antenna. This sort of GPR is so-called uh, two-dimensional GPR because the sort of image that uh, returns to the user is, um, is difficult to interpret for an uh, untrained eye. So um, also this type of uh, GPR is, it was used only as a detection um, uh, technology. Uh, prior to do potholing, usually. Um, another uh, aspect of this GPR is that uh, it can give you the depth of the potential pipe, the top of the potential pipe, but it might be dependent on the frequency of the antenna that you use on this 2D GPR. So the first revolution on this market was in the 90s when IDS Radar introduced the dual frequency mm -hmm. systems, improving dramatically the uh, field work efficiency. Um, coming back to this 2D, um, that requires very skilled workers to connect these hyperbolas and create pipes, real pipes. Mm -hmm. So either you do that, you have these skillful um, um, interpreters of mm -hmm. this data, or you can collect data on a grid, pseudo, we call it pseudo 3D, which uh, accounts for many, many errors is usually in positioning. So the second revolution happened in the 2000s where IDS and other manufacturers introduced the array systems. These array systems uh, account for many, many, many different sensors mm -hmm. with dual polarization, different frequencies, wow. and that creates uh, very uh, high resolution images that the untrained yeah. GPRI can understand. Gotcha, all right. That's, that's exciting. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> IDS GeoRadar's latest technology for this industry is Stream. So mm -hmm. talk about this innovation a little so bit. So the STREAM stands for uh, Subsurface uh, Tomography Radar Equipment for Assets Mapping. Uh, so it was specifically designed for large-scale uh, utility mapping mm -hmm. projects. This is a, a scalable unit, so it can drive up to 40 antennas, but you can reduce it to maybe only eight if you want. Um, another particularity is that uh, it always go um, with uh, GNSS or RTS, Robotic Total Station Sensors. So navigation is very precise, positioning of the data is very precise. And for instance, uh, one of the latest uh, technologies within the stream is the StreamC. Mm -hmm. That accounts also for um, automatic pipe detection algorithms. So the user in real time can see on the monitor, a rugged PC or tablet, can see in real time a tomographic view, but not only, but the software is tracing the pipe in real time, and you can export directly to CAD right after. So. Now, Jamie, you've had a front row seat to all of this. So first of all, though, tell us about T2 Utility Engineers. Okay, thanks, there. Ryan, I appreciate Absolutely. it. It's, um, T2 Utility Engineers is a utility engineering company mm -hmm. um, where we use different equipment to digitize the underground, bring it forward, and try to model this. Uh, we started mostly as a subsurface utility engineering company where we use basic you know, equipment that we had to map and mark the underground. And uh, we've kind of developed from that to our all service company where we can do the detection in the field, the field collection, right through to design, coordination, design of the utilities, and really pushing forward to this 3D model of the world. Majority of our clients would be regions, municipalities, DOTs, ministries, pre-planning type companies where we try okay. to pre-plan and design for them and go from there. And like I said, we use a multitude of different equipment um, to help us get there. Okay, what are you finding most interesting in the field right now? For us, uh, it's, it's one of those things, and you, you hear it when 
all around is technology is coming fast and furious. Yeah. We've had many of these discussions and it's, it's, uh -huh. it's getting thrown at us left, right, and center. And what I find yeah. really exciting about it is that if, if you're not on top of it or in staying in front of it, it kind of falls, you, you fall behind a lot faster Absolutely. now. So it's, we're finding that you know, doing this and being able to bring from what we used to do years ago, um, just 2D dimensionally, we'd actually go out, mark in the field, just paint on the ground, maybe a hand sketch and survey it in if you were yeah, lucky. Yeah. So now we're, we're creating these models and really pushing the forward, the digi digitization of the, of the material that we have and creating these 3D models that you can be absorbed in and, and, and give to our clients. And that's really what I find exciting, just using this new technology. It's, that's great. It's amazing, yeah. So you use Stream, how's it changed the way you've worked? Oh, it's just unreal. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've, Alex and I have been through a lot, you know, getting to the point where we are, but to utilize the stream, like I said before, we used to do this, and years ago, I've been in this industry maybe 20 plus years, and we'd have this, and you'd go out with a paint stick and a paint can, and you'd mark it in the field, and you'd really be going after the utilities and underground infrastructure that you maybe knew was there. Mm -hmm. But now with the stream and the multi-array system, we're able to go out and map physically map the underground, but we're not just looking for utilities, we're looking for structures, abandoned utilities, maybe even non-utility specific information. If I can, a great example, we were doing a Absolutely. project and uh, we, we were getting this weird data back and we start to map it out and create this model and um, we found we were finding buried train tracks. Wow. And so when you start to see this, for me it's exciting because uh -huh. I've seen the evolution of this coming through and when you go to the client and you talk to the client and say, look, this is what we're finding and they just sit there and aw shock, you're like, this is why I do it. This is why we're here, you know? <laughs> That's and great. It was amazing to see that, especially on that project where nobody thought, oh, it's straightforward, easy, and we're finding this stuff. So it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty amazing. So from nice. that aspect, what we see is one thing. And the other side is the efficiency and the time. I bet. We would go out and spend days and weeks doing this. Now it's hours, wow. days, like the time Big and change. the efficiency. And, and then what you have, you have it forever. Yeah. It's digitized, it's sitting there, oh, we need to look at this again, we can go back and look at it. Yeah, access it years down the road you if know, you need it. You know, paint doesn't last long, <laughs> and true. people like to get rid of it on their lawns yeah. and in the road, so it's, uh, you know, it's come a long way for that, for sure. Great, yeah. where do you see the underground detection industry going in the future? Um, in general, um, so GPR is broadly applied for utility mapping, as we are talking, but there are other applications that is mm -hmm. being used, like archeological mapping, geology, uh, concrete scanning, assessment on bridge decks, many, many. Uh, even in railway tracks also to see in the, uh, the statement of the ballast. Um, one promising application for the future I see is uh, agricultural. Uh, so precision agriculture is gonna, is gonna be next, I think. Mm -hmm. And then going to the utility mapping, I think um, it's gonna be more like the integration of different sensors. Not only GPR, but electromagnetic yeah. induction, cameras, laser, everything in one mm -hmm. platform. Um, and then there is something that uh, automation on the software, uh, including more um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, to make more sophisticated algorithms to help the user and, you know, pa is passing from this hyperbola that I told you in the 80s mm -hmm. to something that actually, you know, you can understand. And, uh, and then the, the last part I think is augmented reality. Actually, yeah. IDS just released UViewer, which is an augmented reality platform where all these pipes yeah. or, or anything that you see underground, even this train track, you can yeah. actually go out with this platform, which is a tablet, and actually visualize in three dimensions through AR. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I think the real next step for us is, you know, for at one time we were looking at these role plans on a, on a desk somewhere mm -hmm. and trying to talk yeah. to somebody about it. For now, you know, between scanners and the multi-channel GPR, we're creating this 3D model above and below ground that you can immerse somebody in and, and really see what's out there. And that's what I think is, that's the huge step here and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it is very exciting, yeah. but also like you said, very efficient, very yes. helpful. Yes, Tremendous. Yeah. Wonderful. Alex, thank you. Jamie, thank you very thank much. You very really much. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Too. For more information about today's topic, please visit idsgeoradar.com and t2ue.com. And of course, you can watch more episodes. Go to hxgnspotlight.com. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.